Hi, I'm Craig Matsumoto, a Senior Research Analyst with 451 Research, a part of S&P Global Market Intelligence. And today we're talking with Ian McClarty of Phoenix Nat. Uh, Ian, great to have you here. Craig, thank you. Great to be here. So Ian, let's start by talking about DevOps. When you talk to your customers, what is it they're trying to get out of DevOps? What, what kinds of business objectives do they think it feeds for them? The clients that we speak with are trying to get uh, code out faster historically. And so uh, DevOps has been, a seat, has been uh, uh, absorbed as a way to do that. Uh, DevOps community has typically has, uh, uh, it's getting more and more traction in the enterprise. Uh, and the reason for that is because uh, it's a more interactive way of getting code releases and also uh, less obstruction of silos that have historically been there. Uh, so the, business, the line of business is actually uh, seeing end results and business objectives uh, you know, at, a, at a faster click. And so once they actually start seeing the uh, delivery of software and delivery of, of uh, object, business objectives uh, uh, in, in a faster methodology, it's actually creating a better environment for them. It's actually creating a, a, uh, an environment where um, you know, it, it's more collaborative versus adversarial. And historically, uh, business development and, and software development have been very, uh, very adversarial in the way that uh, it, it's, it's, it's a long gap between uh, delivery of product. It's a long gap between uh, even, even feedback loops that, that are created. Uh, and having them in a more real-time basis actually creates a better product at the end of the day. And, uh, and it's iterative as well. So they're seeing smaller, small, small agile uh, delivery met methods and, and sprint cycles that are actually seen uh, at, you know, and, and actually uh, provide feedback on, and we can get that to the market even. So uh, from, from, uh, from that perspective, um, a lot of companies are embracing that because it makes them more competitive. Uh, it, may, it makes them able to be, uh, you know, to deliver software faster. And, uh, and so, um, Line of business ha is, is investing more and more resources and emphasis into augmenting and expanding DevOps teams. With that, with that comes a lot more responsibility on the VP of engineer uh, to make make calls on what makes what's going to make them successful. And one of the one of the historically one of the biggest barriers of getting code release out has been what environment and what systems does it need to rely on. Uh, today, the VP of engineers make a lot of more, a lot more calls on the infrastructure that is that's going to be selected. And so we're seeing we're seeing a a, a jump. Um, we were seeing about, I would say from a market perspective, about 10% of people actually being truly in a DevOps environment today, uh, and about 90% of the market wanting to head that way or head towards that, that direction. Yeah, we're seeing the same thing at, at 451. With, with our Voice of the Enterprise surveys, we've been asking people uh, on the IT side about what they're getting out of, of DevOps. And first, we are seeing that pretty much every enterprise has moved to DevOps or is in the process of doing it. but. Also, it's, it's interesting when you ask them what they're getting out of it from the IT perspective, because they talk about a lot of the things that you did, Ian. They, they, they talk about the increased responsiveness of the team. They, they talk about getting software out faster. It, 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 when you add it all up, you get a picture of being able to use the resources you have, the team that you have, more effectively, be, being able to, to, to get more out of them while making their jobs a little bit easier. And in, in fact, what we found is that during the pandemic, this accelerated, right? All of digital transformation accelerated, but, but DevOps was carried along with that. 13% of enterprises said that they started new DevOps projects during lockdown. Another 28% said they accelerated projects that were already in progress. And so DevOps is definitely here to stay. So I would like to link that to something else we're hearing a lot about, and that's bare metal. We're getting a lot of questions about bare metal these days, and I'm wondering, Ian, why you think that would be, and and how does does that tie into the whole DevOps thing? Oh, for sure, yeah. Bare metal, bare metal, and DevOps tie very well together, um, especially the way we embrace bare metal, which is being very much about orchestration and automation uh, exposure to the bare metal uh, system that we have, to the bare metal cloud system that we've developed. Uh, the reason for that is because uh, if you if you make it so that from from a from an um, an ingest perspective, it's the same type of technologies that use for orchestration stacks, such as Ansible or, or Terraform. They're, they're the most popular ones. Um, it, it makes it very easy for the developer to uh, to take your resources that you expose to them and just make a couple of config line changes and and la go launch. Uh, so it, it's and the beauty of that is that it, it's it's avoiding some of the vendor lock that historically has existed in some of the platforms that are in, in use today. Uh, so a lot, of, a lot of DevOps teams like that because now they are able to uh, to source uh, infrastructure at at a, at a rate where uh, you know it can scale, help them scale out. They have a lot of choices there. Um, they can they can focus on costing and performance more. 
And so those are some of the things that we align very well to on, on the DevOps side. And bare metal really becomes a, a, a very nice point of, of integration. Um, and then on the other side of the house with bare metal, you have a lot of Kubernetes development that is going on right now. And, uh, and bare metal and Kubernetes integrate very well because you have a very flat platform that you can, that you can put Kubernetes uh, technologies on top of. And Kubernetes gives you, gives you a promise of, of, of being able to get a force multiplier out. And, uh, and that force multiplier is, is, we're seeing that as well. We're seeing some of the, uh, again, going back to what you said, Craig, doing, doing more with less. We are definitely seeing that activity happening right now in, in the market. Uh, a, lot of time, a lot of times people are figuring out that it's, it's not about so much about hiring a bunch of talent. It's more about taking your existing team and restructuring them into, into a DevOps team. And once, once that, that, uh, that change is made, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a smoother process for them. You know, something else that interests me about bare metal right now is just that in this moment, it feels like we're at the beginning of a product cycle as far as the, the CPU and, 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 and GPU industries go. It, it just feels like all the major players have, have announced new families or, 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 or new capabilities with their chips. But that, that brings up a question I have about bare metal kind of in general. How do how does someone like Phoenix Nap differentiate? Because all, when you think about the server, all everything that's special is inside the CPU. So when you look at something like an Intel a Xeon Gen 3 server, how do you differentiate offering that as bare metal? Great question. So uh, one, one, one of the ways we differentiate is because we actually we actually do write a lot of code. We actually have, uh, we refactored our software development teams into DevOps teams, uh, I would say about 18 months ago. and and uh, use what's called the safe uh, agile methodology for the framework. Uh, so we can even scale out our teams that way. Um, and what we do for, and this is very important for us because number one, we, we want to take advantage of some of the things that we, we talk about, right? So, you know, getting code out fast to the market, being able to be more collaborative with, with your development teams. Um, and, and also to get that customer interaction and that feedback loop going really fast. And so we are able to take advantage of a lot of those pieces because we are actually living what they're living, which is nice. So we, we, we have that, that kind of like that thought framework as well. Now, what, what differentiates us is, is more on, I would say, is that software development effort and that, and that really XPI, API exposure into things that are very difficult to do uh, normally. So Intel, for example, creates a lot of great uh, technology stacks. Uh, and then they themselves are also investing a lot into the API as well. But, um, but being able to obfuscate and automate and educate is 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 is, uh, is difficult for a lot of companies, and so we are doing a better job being able to uh, to simplify those pieces down, and to make it so that um, a system call that, that might be very difficult, or even exposure into some of this new hardware stack, uh, having that understanding and some of the experience and expertise into it, we can we can we can uh, help our clients uh, to to basically to shortcut some of these things uh, that, that are that they themselves will have to learn the hard way, and it takes time. And, and I mean, right now that's that is probably the most precious commodity is time. Uh, especially when we're talking about software development and getting getting uh, code out, and so uh, one of the things that we take a lot of pride in is 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 uh, starting to do a lot more benchmarking, uh, starting to do a lot more on like this is what the systems can actually do for you. Comparisons this is how you can performance optimize them as well. So it isn't just like going and buying a bunch of like dedicated systems and create an OpEx model. Anybody can do that. It's it's more about okay taking this understanding of what the equipment can actually do, testing it, uh, you know, bringing up that expertise with your engineering teams, your marketing teams, so they can show you the, the performance in, inside those, those systems. And then on top of that, building a lot of good software that, that is module based, that is, that is API driven, that orchestrates and, and uh, really exposes functionality out. One of the things that we are tackling next is, uh, is taking some very hard workloads that exist today and, uh, and working on ways to simplify that down so that anybody uh, that we do business with or, or a potential client can go and do POCs or can go in and, uh, and follow the very simple instructions or uh, or, or really simple ways to launch uh, complex workloads. Great, well, Ian, we could go a lot deeper with this. I know we could talk all day about it, but we're at time. So thanks very much for joining us. Very interesting stuff. Greg, thank you very much for having me. This was great. Uh, and uh, oh, and by the way, if, if uh, anybody wants to get additional information, uh, visit our website at phoenixsnap.com or uh, I'm available via LinkedIn as well. Yes, and, and if you'd like to get more of the 451 perspective about bare metal, about data center CPUs and this whole product cycle we're in, you can visit us at 451research.com. Thanks.